I'm back again, Day of Reckoning 2. I got Stone Cold and Kane, and I believe that match happened. Um, yeah, I remember that match happened, and I believe it was the first blood, actually. This is a hardcore match, uh, first blood and knockout are on, so if you bleed or get knocked out, you lose. I'm going to be in the other room here, so please enjoy the video. Have a good rest of the day. God bless. Thank you guys. It's probably support. not necessarily now, going to be in the future and in the past. Appreciate you. The biggest and best world title reign for Damian Priest, and I want them to prove me wrong about that because I'd like him to actually reach that status where we look at him as like a worthwhile world heavyweight champion. But anytime somebody makes that step up from mid card guy who can't win the main event and doesn't even necessarily get the main event spot even without winning the championship. Like obviously, you know, there are people like Sami Zayn with always talked about with the money in the bank stuff, the, the intercontinental title and all. But like Gunter, I would think if you put the title on him, you know, world heavyweight title, uh WWE title, when you put the belt on him, I'm already gonna go, okay, he's world heavyweight champion guy. Like, they've done enough to build him up to that level. Priest was in a mid-card spot. He's a tag team champion and all. They're going to have to establish him as a world heavyweight champion. Unless they just plan on having it be like, well, the moment was the moment. And then after that point, it doesn't really matter. And he drops it super fast or something. And then if that's the case, he's probably never going to win a world title again. So if they have an investment in him, they need to spend these next few weeks, months, whatever, however long they plan on doing that, it needs to be, like, full push mode and not, eh, he won the title, he had his moment, so let's just let him kind of simmer with that. Like, no, you need to give him some wins that matter. You need to have him booked for a prominent spot at the next pay-per-view. He needs to come out on Monday Night Raw and maybe, like, kick some people out of the Judgment Day or something. Like, establish some authority, not just hang around with, like, uh, J.D. McDonough's a loser and he's going to lose all of the matches heading up into all of my future feuds or something because that'll just be the same kind of situation. And then uh, then we have more of the World Heavyweight title that's definitely the B title, and you got to kind of break out of that. So there's, there's positive potential. There's realistic, maybe not necessarily how it's going to work out type of uh, perspective, but... At least for this moment itself, I was like, oh, this is really cool. I really like this. So, um, in a bubble, major thumbs up for me. And if Drew McIntyre hasn't re-signed, maybe that's another reason why. If he has re-signed, which I assume he probably did, because why are they promoting uh, Clash of the Castle with Drew McIntyre prominently on there? Um, yeah, then he'll come back around. He'll win that title. You know. So... After that was the uh, the announcement that Snoop Dogg was joining commentary, and <laughs> I was like, uh, I don't know what's happening here. And then the announcement of a special guest referee for the next match, which was Bubba Ray Dudley. And I one of the first things I had seen that I thought was really funny was people taking pictures of that and posting this on Twitter and saying, "Why is Alex Jones here?" <laughs> it's like, okay, you guys kind of look like. That. I mean, I added, I added a couple of comments ahead. It's got kind of the. Um, I, I was kind of nervous about the first time he went to uh, do a pin count because it's by the look of him, he struggled to get back to his feet afterwards. I mean, he didn't go for many uh, pin counts in this. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah, kind of stood off to the side. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also just the obvious thing of the case of God, this guy has no impartiality or like in terms of this this <laughs> AEW and WWE stuff. Like, just another paid chill. That's mm. fine. That's like like. I would like people that are clearly paid shills to just own the fact that they're paid shills and just say, like, oh, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm, just saying, I'm trying to be impartial and I just have these criticisms about AEW because everyone has criticisms about AEW. Everyone has criticisms about WWE. Then no, neither of them are perfect promotions. But he, but the fact that he lays it on so thick in the, in the guise of, like, I'm just trying to help and give some advice and then comes out wearing a WWE referee shirt and, <laughs> like, he's just doing all that stuff. I, yeah, I... I you know, it was. It's. I can understand it. It's Philadelphia and doing like an ECW kind of tribute thing with the Paul Heyman stuff as well. So th there was logic for the reason doing it. I just think that he doesn't do himself any favors if he wants to be seen as like this impartial voice of reason, which is probably not. He just wants to be in like a um, uh, just any any one of these like talk show or radio hosts. Just wants to have a, a strong opinion. 